Hello. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. You like my beard that keeps coming in stronger? <laughs> sometimes I grow a beard and sometimes I don't. Uh, usually if I don't have any particular thing I'm working on that doesn't require, you know, clean shaving or something that I feel like is appropriate to shave for. Excuse me. And I usually would let my beard grow out. So, I have a topic for today. It's obsession or um, I had the word in my head earlier. Obsession versus um, Kingsley, come on. I've been doing some script writing on some stuff, so my vocabulary is failing me. Position versus. Oh, patterns. And kind of the difference between them, the healthy difference, the uh, negative aspects of patterns. So, what is an obsession? An obsession is something you can't let go of, that you focus almost 100% of your thinking to, whether it's conspiracy or you focus it on an object. Many people do this with people, some people do it with food, some people do it with, um, well, I don't know, music. I mean, there's a number of things you can be obsessed by. You can be obsessed with a band, but it's really, obsessions really are more about you as a person than they are about the object you're focusing on. Because in the end, it's something that you're seeking for yourself within it, whether it be an escape or there's a certain level of envy you have for it that you desire. Um, something that's within you that you're seeking that you don't find that you feel this satisfies that or attempts to satisfy it because obsessions don't satisfy in the end. Otherwise they would ultimately end um, healthy. <laughs> they usually don't do that. They usually end the opposite of that. So for example, if you watch a TV show over and over and over and over and over and over again, and you just spend all your time watching that, then that could be an unhealthy obsession. Now, there's also patterns that that's, patterns are things that you make a consistent part of your life. It doesn't have to be an obsession, it's just something that you do. Let's say, for example, what I'm doing here, this is a pattern. I'm, developing a healthy pattern to get exercise, film a video with you and for you, and build some consistency in my ability to accomplish things. So that can be a healthy pattern. If I was obsessed with it, where I spent all my time thinking about it, then it would probably not be a good, place, a good thing to be doing. <laughs> um, so knowing the difference between them is a huge part of, and, and, and what control you have over your life are very important things. Um, I think developing healthy patterns is a very good thing, at least in my view, excuse me, because consistency builds within your mind discipline, and that will help you to accomplish things long term. So if you make a point that every day at nine o'clock you're going to write for an hour, cut off, cut off any distractions around you, then that could be healthy for you because over the course of time you've created a slot in your schedule to accomplish something and to put your mind to something 
And that builds confidence, that builds discipline. If you said, okay, tomorrow, I'm gonna spend all day writing. And that becomes an unhealthy thing because in the end, if you don't accomplish that, and that becomes a consistent thing, you're like, I have to do it. I have to spend all my time thinking about it. I have to give everything I've got to it. I can't stop, I can't stop. Well then, ultimately you can lose sight of other important things in your life. Um, you can, again, focusing on aspects of that that are not healthy for you. Overreading lyrics, looking for subliminal messaging, all that kind of stuff that can happen. And you lose your ability to structure your time in positive ways for your own growth. So, for example, if you wanted to do nine o'clock to 10 o'clock of writing in the morning, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock of working out, that could be beneficial to you and you're dividing your time. There's, an, there's unhealthy patterns just as much though. Um, they're not obsessions, they're just unhealthy patterns. And those would include things like, <clears throat> and I think this happens a lot in relationships, where your pattern is, you go to work, you come home, you spend time with your significant other, and that's the day. And you repeat that pattern over and over and over again. And if there's no diversity within that pattern, what can ultimately happen is you become burned out on it and it leads you to seek escapes from that um, mundane thing. So that's where affairs tend to come in because you're looking for something that does not exist within the relationship you currently have because it has reached a consistent pattern that shows no diversity to it. And you, we as human beings, for the most part, seek evolution within, I'm not talking about, you know, morphing from one creature into another, but from a psychological standpoint, and even from a physical standpoint, we seek evolution, whether it be from a physical nature, I mean, you know, becoming more active. From a psychological nature, it means learning about new things, one way or another. We seek it. Uh, and sometimes it's disguised as an affair, but it really hasn't. It really isn't necessarily about the other person, per se, because you've already established an unhealthy pattern with that person because you are for lack of a better word right now, cheating or not holding up your part of a vow to another individual. So those are unhealthy patterns. So how do we find a balance between a healthy pattern and a negative pattern? Well, by now allowing ourselves to get in circumstances where we will not be happy and that we will ultimately seek an escape from. So let's say from a relationship standpoint, you're dating someone, first six months are great and glorious and happy and you spend all your time together and you can't imagine doing anything else but spending the evenings with that person. Well, ultimately, you're going to learn so many things about that person that eventually there's nothing new to learn and the exploration is over. So you start to look for other explorations. Either you leave the relationship because you need something that's more evolving in your mind or something that's fresh me. or you simply stay in it because you've developed a pattern of staying with this person for six months, four years, 20 years, whatever, and you look for methods outside of the relationship, but you don't want to break the other pattern because it's safe.
So my thought would be, number one, when you first start dating someone, and this is where I've been. So this is not advice that I'm coming to without experience in knowing the struggles of developing bad patterns because I've developed bad patterns. When you start a relationship, don't make it all about the other person. Because when you commit yourself so much to another person that you lose track of things you need to accomplish in your goals, professionally or personally, then ultimately your life, your vitality depends on them. And when it doesn't anymore, you seek a new source of blood or vitality. So spend time with someone who you start dating, embrace it, enjoy it, the whole thing. But also allow yourself breaks from one another. You know, don't get into a place where you have to spend every evening with that person. Some people can't stand the idea of after six months, they're like, I don't want to talk to you every single hour of every single day. And I would agree with that not being healthy because what happens is if you are always here with each other and consistent, like within, you know, inches of reach by phone or whatever else, then there's nothing to share when you come back together again because they know everything you've been doing all day because they've been talking to you all day. The same thing goes if you spend every evening together. Eventually, you know what they did. Well, what did you do yesterday? Same thing you did. Oh, I just sat there with you. We watched that movie. Oh, this is why friendships and hobbies that are just yours can be very important. Of course, it's important to share hobbies and like minds on certain things, but it doesn't have to be to a point, even if you do, it doesn't mean you have to spend all of your time with that person doing that activity, those activities that you always share common strength with. Now, for some people that works, this is not a 100% absolute solution for everyone. Some people love being together all the time, every day, every morning, everything. They just understand each other's rhythms. It seems harmonious and they go forward. That is not the case, I believe, with at least 80% of the population. I believe we always see growth and change and advancement, further development psychologically, physically from a moving standpoint, excitement. So we have to have those breaks so that we can go do things separately and come back together and offer something to the relationship, to the person you're with. This is just, to me, a healthy pattern. It doesn't mean become so disconnected that you only see each other once every two weeks. That's an extreme of a different kind because ultimately it means then that they're not so important to you that you make time for them. It's a matter of being able to spend time together two or three times a week that are consistent, committed times to just you in the relationship. And then other times during the week, you may be in the same household, you may be uh, talking on the phone, if you're not living together, but you're not on the phone for two hours at a time. You're just on the phone for 30 minutes, checking in, say, hey, how you doing? What's going on with you today? Or talking about current events. I think having, personally, being able to discuss current events with someone you're dating and getting their perspective on it, whether they're your boyfriend or your spouse or whatever, but that's very healthy. Because it, excuse me, <laughs> because it creates 
a method of exploring things together. This is why travel can be really positive for relationships together and separately because you can bring something back to the table that you can offer someone and in relationships there's a balance where sometimes you're on the same level sometimes one person has some knowledge that you don't have and vice versa and that ultimately does create a balance in a different way because you're not always teacher teacher sometimes your teacher student on both sides and that could be a really positive thing for relationships the same thing goes for patterns in general outside of relationships don't be afraid to skew from a pattern if it comes to a point where you start punishing yourself because you're not completely a hundred percent following the pattern you created because if you do get to a place where you're so militant if that's the right choice of words or so specific and nitpicky about well I have to do this at 9 I have to do this at 10 I have to do this at 11 then eventually those things no longer become something that you look forward to harnessing your energy towards they become requirements and when people have requirements, just like when you were in school, or just sometimes like in relationships, when it becomes a requirement, the pleasure is gone from it. The joy is sucked out of it because it's no longer something you do openly with pleasure. It's something that you feel is almost an assignment, almost a job. And while relationships require effort, they should not be work. The same for your patterns. They should be effort, but not work. They'd be something that you, if you're making a career out of something, then of course it's work. But you should still, if you have the ability to within that work, find ways of making it an effort that you enjoy and not a requirement to the point where you become burned out. That's why you'll see people constantly switching from job to job now. It's not like it was in the 6th century or the 17th century or whatever else when jobs were essentially very isolated. You had, you know, you know, you had um, blacksmiths, you had um, sewers, you had people who uh, did whatever for the city maintenance in whatever kind of way and that was their job but there really wasn't anything so wild out there to pursue now there's so many different variations of jobs and areas of focus within those uh, specific categories of work that you can always look for something new or just jump ship from that career path completely and look for something else and it's because you can become burnt out because it becomes work, not an effort that you enjoy putting in to accomplishing a goal. So I think it's really important that we know when we have obsessions because we do it every day to a point of where we can't let go of it. And we push people away. Um, or we push so much to indulge in their company because it validates something in us that we smother it and kill it. Um, unfortunately, sometimes this happens in a quite literal pattern where people's obsessions then can become literally murderous. And um, I think it's just a matter of now for yourself. And I do this for myself every day. When it comes to my dogs, for example, I have two beautiful dogs and they came to me in a way where I didn't really decide to have them or choose to have them. 
they became something that was just essentially dropped at my feet by someone who assumed that's what I wanted. And it wasn't what I was ready to put energy into at that time. So for a long time, I did not appreciate my puppies as pleasured effort to spend time with them. They became more of a requirement. And of course there's responsibilities in your life, but I hope it's understandable that there's a difference between a responsibility that you are happy to have versus a responsibility that you feel burnt out on. Even you can feel burnt out on taking care of your dogs or your pets every day. That's why you can take them to a kennel for a few days or a boarding or a spa, or you can ask a neighbor to take care of them while you take a quick road trip for a few days. So you can have those breaks and then come back and realize the pleasure that comes from being with them. For me, that's what happened. I went on a cruise for about a week and I came back and my perspective had changed pretty dramatically with my dogs, I noticed. With one in particular who I'd had a frustrating time with, I began to just realize how grateful I was to have him in my life. And every day, just like with people, this is the same thing. You grow to realize when you're not together, that it makes the time together that much more valuable. The same thing with patterns. Make it something that's not your end all be all of everything, but something that you get to harness your energy towards once a day or three times a week, whatever the case may be. Find a, a balance that makes it work and makes it joyous for you. And then you can spend your time with that and enjoy it and be happy when the time comes to come back to it again. Don't get obsessed by things because obsessions hardly ever and I mean 99% of the time, don't end in positive results. They end in a place where you feel unfulfilled, you feel like you were taken advantage of, you almost have a poor me mentality, like you didn't get what you were supposed to get from it. And it debilitates your ability sometimes to move forward because you can be trapped in misery because relationship ended, Misery because you were rejected by your favorite band when you kept sending the music you wrote for them, whatever it may be. And you can become frozen and it becomes very difficult to move forward. So look for positive patterns, give them the attention that is necessary to keep it a joy and a pleasure for you. Something that you love doing. And don't be afraid to look for other things that can make your life add to your life and help you to further move forward, whether it be from a physical way, a psychological way. It's always out there. All right, we did it. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Be well.